This is uh, HRT 125, Unit 3, The Rise of Agriculture and Nutrition. <laughs> Mankind, when they first started, were just hunters and gatherers. They would walk around trying to find different bushes that they could eat the berries. Uh, they would finally find animals that they could slaughter and eat. But around 10,000 years ago, we started to look around and see, well, we would probably do better if we could take that bush where we found berries or seeds and plant them. It was probably by happenstance in these areas you see right here uh, that people had a garbage pile perhaps, or they threw away uh, some corn, some barley, some wheat, and notice that the next year they seem to grow back here. We look here and we see the Fertile Crescent 8,500 years ago, we think agriculture started over in China 7,500 years ago, someplace in Africa, maybe even 10,000 years ago. We can look around and we see that not like today where you go to the supermarket and you can see all sorts of choices for different fruits and vegetables. That's not what happened many thousands of years ago. We look here, the new world, we're talking about North and South America. What plants were here 10,000 years ago? We had corn from Central America. Didn't look like what you see here there, but we'll show you some pictures later on. We see the tomato. We see the potato. We see vanilla beans. We see the rubber tree, cocoa, tobacco. These are plants that were only in the New World. And it took man starting to travel throughout the world to bring things back. When Christopher Columbus came back after discovering the New World, he brought certain plants back with him. He brought the potato. He brought corn. These things were then populated by people in Europe, and then maybe brought to Africa, China, Australia. But again, it took travel for us to do that. Now, of course, we have the jet plane, and we see all sorts of plants throughout the world. How do we know this? Um, we can look back to archaeology and see what plants came from what area. Uh, where did the pineapple come, pineapple come from? Where did the banana come from? We have hints. Uh, this lower picture that you see here, you see seeds that were found in Scotland. Now these had drifted up from South America, so the currents carried them. This is one way that uh, seeds were populated throughout the world. We all have the idea of the coconut that floats along the water, comes to different islands, and grows. We have a lot of ideas that help us to see where these plants came from. One other way is if we look under the microscope, we can see different crystals within the areas of the cells. In this particular case here, we see calcium oxalate. Um, these are crystals that certain plants have that very, very slowly uh, dissolve over time. So if we're looking in a fire pit or we're looking in a garbage heap and we find cells with these crystals in here, they can help us identify the plant and give us an idea where they came from. Um, many plants today still have things. Taro, which the Hawaiian people eat all the time, had these crystals in them. Um, mankind had to learn how to tame these crystals so you could eat the food. In the rubber plant, here's some other crystals that we find out here. We can assume that when we find cells in a garbage pile, that have these crystals, we can assume that the rubber plant was used by these people. Another way that we can do this is looking at ice cores. We take a drill and we're able to drill down and pull up the ice 
from thousands of feet uh, below the surface. We can go down hundreds of thousands of years now. You can imagine in the Arctic, for example, that as snow formed, this was packed on top of each year. So we would have years and years and years packed on top of each other. So then when we took a core, kept it frozen, and then we would pull it out, take out a small piece, counting down the years, we could then look to see perhaps what the level of the carbon dioxide was. Uh, were there was there pollen in this area? So the deeper we went, we can see what the Earth was like 100,000 years ago, perhaps. Uh, another way is to look at what the Earth was like. We all know that at one time, uh, the Earth was just one huge landmass. Um, this is called Pangaea. This probably happened two or three times, and the different continents broke off to where they are right now. Well, this, of course, was over thousands of years ago. When we look at, for example, um, England, in this particular right here, the English Channel wasn't there. This was just 7,500 years ago. There was a land bridge connecting England with France. When this bridge was then cut, when the English Channel then connected the North Sea there, all of a sudden England was cut off from the rest and we had different plants that evolved differently. Now the biggest example of this is Australia, where we have thousands of different plants and animals that evolved differently. Another way that we can look out there is to look at pollen grains. Now this, of course, is looked at a huge uh, uh, magnification. Look at these pollen grains. You know, we look in the spring and the fall, uh, the trees, the bushes, the plants all have pollen out there. If you remember from your first unit, uh, the pollen is part of the uh, sexual rep reproduction of the plants. And the plants will then try to disseminate this as far as possible. Now these are very long lasting. And each pollen is a little different. You see here there's two different types of pollen. One is a cucumber pollen uh, versus the orchid pollen. Again, it's unique to each species and allows us to identify what plants were in a particular area at what time. So using all this information, we can get a pretty good idea how agriculture started. Where did it start? We probably think that 10,000 years ago, we had this shift to agriculture. And it probably happened in these seven different areas that you see here. We see uh, South America, for one, along the western border. This is where the uh, Incans established culture. We see Mexico or, or Central America, where probably the Mayans were there. We see in North America, the area around uh, Southern Illinois. We think someplace in Africa, we're not quite sure. We think that it was Sub-Saharan Africa. We're not exactly sure. You've all heard about the Fertile Crescent, the the land between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers uh, in Iran right now. Uh, there was China and also some of the islands along the New Guinea uh, islands there. From this area, agriculture spread out. When we could have agriculture, when we found that we could actually grow grain this allowed us to have more calories, and because we had more calories, we could have more people. Plants evolved along that time, too. Uh, for example, grass. Grasses suddenly grew taller, so man had to grow taller. Man had to stand up on his legs to move around. We became much more efficient in gathering this food. We became better at traveling. So now, since we had food, we could do other things. 
we could travel more, we could explore more, we could trade more, we could build cities more. This map here then shows uh, some areas where plants were thought to originate. Again, you saw the original pictures of the Americas, where some of our dominant foods were. Uh, plants that may have saved the world, like the potato. Um, we see over in Russia, for example, we have areas there, that's where the apple trees came from. We have barley and wheat came from the Central Asia areas or the Middle East areas. Uh, we see sugarcane coming from New Guinea highlands. These were not throughout the world. How do we do this? Those images that I first showed you, the crystals that are out there, the pollen that was there, the ice core samples, the other samples that we take deep down, this showed us where these plants came from. Man also realized that he needed to have more than just one type of food. Through experimentation, they realized that they need to have food together. For example, the legumes, the peas and the beans, they supplied the amino acids such as lysine and tryptophan. Um, they realized that he needed to add something to them, probably through trial and error, that you had to add rice to it, or perhaps you had corn to it, and this gave them a balanced diet. These are some pictures here of different fruits and vegetables coming from different parts of the world. Coffee, for example, came from possibly uh, Eastern Africa, Ethiopia. Citrus tree came from the bottom part of Russia, perhaps Kazakhstan. The banana, banana came from Asia. Through travel, through trade, uh, they were then established throughout the world. Man also saw that they could take these wild plants and do something with them. The best, of course, was corn. Through a thousand years, we have come from that small thing that, on the left there that looked like grass growing, the corn that we have nowadays. This came through us manipulating the corn. Somebody noticed that when they took the teosinte, which was the original corn plant, they noticed that when the seeds shattered, they spread all over the place. They also noticed that the seeds were bigger if it, they didn't shatter. So someone was smart enough to realize, well, let's take those ones that don't shatter and plant them in a certain area. Somebody decided to take the most desirable plants of that corn and plant them in different areas. This continued and continued through a thousand years, so to we are at corn right now. Barley was another example. It started off just as one or two rows of seeds, and again, through artificial selection, man has decided that they could take the best ones and plant them in certain areas and we get the barley where we have today. Stalks are shorter so consequently they can uh, live better when the rain comes or the snow comes. They stay upright, they don't fall over and get diseased. They can be harvested and there's more seed per plant and they can feed a lot more people. we realized uh, that we couldn't just plant one type of food. It was far more efficient for us to produce one type of food because then we didn't have to worry about uh, interspacing uh, different types of food in this area. We could harvest it all at the same time. We knew that they all grew to the same height. We, all, we knew that they'd be picked at a certain time. That way we could store them all together. Uh, 
uh, we have found out that if you have a lot of plants together, you can have a lot more diseases. And if they're all exactly the same plant, one disease will attack all of them. So consequently, man has decided uh, th that they can easily, you know, although they can easily harvest one plant, it is better to interspace them. For example, um, tobacco right now. Tobacco was first farmed in the Chesapeake Peak area. But we didn't have any uh, special fertilizers back then, and consequently the fields were used up. Tobacco went was, as the fields were used up, um, we, the only fertilizer we had was manure. We would add manure to this, but this changed the taste of the tobacco, and people didn't want to buy it anymore. Fortunately, we realized that you could plant tomatoes there. The tomatoes then gave back nutrients to the soil. 